Hello everyone. We are finally doing part two of our video on prayer. It's been a while and we're sorry for the delay, but the girls have been really busy with midterms and assignments and I have not been able to get a moment to get this done earlier. And since we want to do this as a family endeavor, I had to just wait patiently. So anyway, here we are and we'd like to begin with a, a small prayer invoking the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in this uh, second part on prayer, we are going to give you a simple way to help you in your prayer journey. I'm sure most of y'all who will see this video already have a very enriched, uh, active prayer life. But this is for our friends and family who... Uh, maybe have not uh, really uh, gone down that road yet and we are uh, you know encouraging you to begin uh, don't worry about how much you pray or you know just just begin even with uh, a small prayer giving thanks to God um, start with five minutes and continue at least be faithful to the five minutes every day and after a few days or a week or a bit of time of doing this you will find that um, it becomes easier and the grace that you will receive from those five minutes every day will make you will keep you open to praying even longer so give it a try uh, don't expect to take everything on that we are doing or anybody else is doing right away uh, we are doing a lot because uh, we are called to do this as a family we have been spending time in prayer and so we've been we kind of grown to this point but for you begin anyway and uh, never think about how much it's not the quantity, it's the quality. Just spend a little bit of time and God will open the way for you. So in this uh, part, we're going to focus on the word, an acronym for the word ACTS, A-C-T-S, as in Acts of the Apostles or any ACTS, right? Um, A is for adoration, which is adoring, praising and glorifying God. C is contrition, being sincerely sorry for our sins. T is thanksgiving, thanking God from our hearts for everything and everyone in our lives, be it good or bad. And supplication is making all our needs and intentions known to God and asking his intervention and providence. So um, we're going to begin uh, with A for Acts. And now as a family, we don't always follow this, this uh, in, in this order which maybe we need to think about it and, uh, you know, consciously make that effort to do it that way. We cover all these aspects in our daily prayers, personal prayers and uh, community prayers. But it's, it's a good way to follow ACTS in this order. There is a, a wisdom in it. And so this is a personal note to ourselves to do this. So in the first part on prayer, we, I mentioned that our videos will be centered around the cross. We have the vertical post, which is our relationship and communication with God. And from that flows the grace that we need to have a good communication and relationship with our neighbor, which is the horizontal beam. So adoration, the magisterium teaches us that adoration is for God alone. We worship, adore, praise God alone because he is God. We are not because he's the only one worthy of all our praise, worship and adoration. Uh, because he's omnipotent, omnipresent, he is creator, father, he's everything from whom we receive everything in our world. He is the source of all things. And so uh, we reserve that for him alone. Um, you know, in, in, in romance, in the world of romance, you'll hear songs that talk about, I, oh, I worship and adore you and, you know, for each other, for, for the lover, for the spouse and, you know, words have meaning and we shouldn't really use those words loosely as they as we do sometimes so we reserve those words worship adore praise for god alone and we can use you know the famous i love you 
you're so lovable, you know, things like that. We can find alternatives, other words we can use for each other. So we reserve those words for God. It's good to train ourselves to do this. So Joanna was going to share with you a little bit about how she practices her call to adoration. So, so there's several ways that you can adore God. The first one that I that, can, that comes to my mind is adoration with Jesus in the Eucharist. So you can look it up, Adoration Catholic or Monstrance Catholic on Google Images. So what happens here is when Jesus is most vulnerable with you. So the same Jesus that you receive at Mass, he is being put on the altar right in front of you to adore. So when you are sitting in front of him, and if you don't have any prayers to say, maybe you're just, um, just there. The best thing you can do is just to praise God for being God and praise him for how incredible he is. Even if you don't want to praise him, even if you don't uh, feel like um, everything is going well in your life and you don't feel like God is to be praised, he is still to be praised. So it's important that you just praise him for being who he is and for being how amazing he is. And you know, one way that you can think of how amazing he is is if you go out in nature or if you think of... Um, anything that really exists naturally. So my, my favorite example is actually brain. So nobody has been able to replicate a physical brain. People have been able to do artificial intelligence, but nobody has been able to make another organ, like how they make um, artificial heart valves or how they make artificial body parts that can function in a human body. Nobody has been able to make a functioning brain that works like a human brain. Nobody. And that only gives rise to how incredible, like, we can only think of how incredible God is for making brains, for making them how complex and detailed they are and how they function so well. And all you can do is just think of how great he is for doing what he has done. Because you can't understand it. Humans can't. We, we haven't gotten there. We probably won't. So the best thing to do is just sit down, sit, sit back and think of, how great God is. And you know, God also gives us the words to say if that's, um, if, if you're at a loss for words. In the, uh, in the Psalms, there are words, there's like formulas given to us, and the Bible is actually the word of God. So in God's own words, you can pray it from your heart. If you open up a Psalm and you look for something that you want to say to God, you open it up and you say the words of that psalm. And that is a form of praise to God as well. Yeah, and in nature, I mean, I find it uh, for myself, my own example is when I am out driving somewhere, or taking a walk in nature and I see, especially in fall, if I see trees with amazing colors, you know, I we are driving together and I'll tell Joe, pull over, pull over, I got to take some pictures. And look at those trees, they're amazing. And I see a flower or, you know, uh, snow crystals and flakes on the windshield of the car. I, I'm there taking pictures of everything and in my heart. And I'm saying, my goodness, God, you're so amazing. You're such an amazing artist. Nobody on the face of this earth could ever, ever do what you do. I mean, to create like this, the detail, every leaf, they're all orange, but they all look different. So, uh, you know, wonder this is awe. so the spirit, gift of the, spirit. the gift of, yeah, the wonder and awe at creation. That is my prayer. Very often that's my prayer and it's straight from my heart. I'm all excited over the littlest things in nature. So, so next we're going to talk about contrition. Yes. Contrition. Contrition. Who is going to talk about that? Yes. So contrition, C for contrition. Contrition means being truly sorry for your sins. So we are all sinners. Every single one of us is a sinner. And just because the world tells us that there is no right on right or wrong doesn't mean that everything's good, right? That everything's okay because they promote relativism, which means good is whatever you think it to be. And that's not true because there is truth and that truth is founded in God. So God's truth tells us that we need, we are sinners, we need to repent. And that is why Jesus, though God, became man and came to the earth, suffered and died on the cross in order to save us from our sins 
so that one day we could be with him forever eternally in heaven. So this is a very serious issue, a very big, I would say, uh, a focal teaching, a very important vital teaching in the Catholic Church about forgiveness. And, uh, you know, God has given all of us a conscience. Ever since we were tiny babies, we have known right from wrong. You will see little children, if they're doing something naughty, they know very well that they are doing something wrong. You see it in their faces. I remember you guys. You can see it in their faces, their responses. They know. And that's the conscience. And very often we can choose to ignore that little voice, that inner voice, which is God's voice, guiding us, teaching us right from wrong. We can ignore it and not listen to it and just go about doing our own thing. That is a big problem in the world today. Okay, so we need to come back to God's... Uh, message to us what is right what is wrong and what gets us to be with him so julia is going to share with us a little bit about her thoughts on contrition yeah so uh, like mom was saying we all need to repent before god for our sins uh, because he's always waiting to forgive us just think of jonah god gave him a second chance when jonah didn't want to go and um warn the people of nineveh of god's wrath that was to come. So, but when the people of Nineveh, they changed their hearts, God saw that and didn't destroy them. So likewise, he sees our hearts and knows when we're actually sorry. So when we go to confession, God is, you, he's present, very present in the person of the priest. And he uses the priest to forgive our sins. So it's not the priest forgiving us, it's God forgiving us. But it's, his forgiveness doesn't really work if we're not truly sorry. So what does that mean? It means we have to make it a point to change, uh, to fix our mistakes. But, you know, something we also need to know is that there is a horizontal component to this as well, uh, where we, no matter how sorry we are for our sins, we always have to face the consequences of it. So if, um, if I do something that, uh, makes mom upset I'm gonna have to apologize to her too otherwise when I go to confession and I just say sorry to God then there's no point because Jesus tells us in the Gospels to reconcile with one another before we make our sacrifices before God before we uh, adore him and praise him and all that um, also God is love God is mercy so he's willing he's ready and willing to always give us those gifts of himself to us but if we are not truly sorry for our sins and if we aren't ready to change our lives for the better, then he's not going to give us what we don't want. So we really have to show him that we want it through our actions. We have to show God that we are truly sorry for our sins and go to confession with a sincere heart. Yeah, and uh, just to make that very clear, the going to the sacrament of reconciliation saying sorry to God when we offend him is the horizontal component for, for, for vertical. the vertical, the vertical, thank you, the vertical component of, uh, of the act of contrition, of contrition, right? We go to God in the sacrament. We say sorry to him in prayer. The horizontal is we offend God. We hurt him when we hurt our neighbor. So that is the horizontal component that Julia just spoke about. We need to apologize not just to God, but also to our neighbor. So this is, uh, we need both, right? So if our neighbor chooses, I was really mad and doesn't want to forgive us, that's their problem and they begin to, ha they have to answer for their unforgiveness, okay? You are free of it. You have been forgiven. And adding on to that, just remember that in the Our Father, we ask God to forgive us as we forgive others who have sinned against us. So it's conditional. Yeah. Forgiveness is conditional. Forgiveness from God is conditional. And we do something called the examination of conscience. Mm -hmm. Before we go to bed, it is suggested that we think about our day, what we did good, what we didn't do very well, what we intentionally did wrong. And we ask God's forgiveness and the grace to overcome that. And as Julia said earlier, to change, right? Con contrition means not just saying sorry, but trying never to do it again. Avoiding near occasion of sin. That means when you know you've, you're weak in a certain area, don't do it. Don't go there. Don't, don't uh, avoid it. Avoid it. So that's really important. So T is for Thanksgiving. And having an attitude of gratitude in life is a vital experience, uh, a vital way of experiencing peace and joy 
it is it is vital vital and gratitude is a virtue that flows from a humble heart one that doesn't take any blessing in life for granted but who sees everything as pure gift from god and in his divine providence he gives to us out of his generosity and abundance so it is divine wisdom to be able to have such an attitude of gratitude of being able to see his hand in everything not just in the good things and the blessings and the good stuff but also in the bad which is very difficult uh the the catholic church teaches this very clearly that we are we should see god's hand even in negative situations and experiences in life because it is through those experiences that he's teaching us something he always brings good out of a bad situation if we can be open to it and see it that way so we should always hold on to that hope that comes even in a bad situation that he is teaching us something lord what is it you want me to learn from this and he's probably you know you always end up being stronger and wiser and uh, more encouraged to try harder and to strive to to you know have success uh, if god wills it in your efforts and you continue moving forward you know and so that comes from an attitude of gratitude and uh, it brings a lot of blessings into our lives when we have such an attitude because we're giving thanks to god and he's so generous that when we thank him with with sincerity he pours out even more he can never be outdone in generosity so when we are thankful to him he's like oh my child you know i'm he's like i love you so much and then then he showers more graces and blessings so we don't do it for that reason of course we are sincere in our thanks but this is how it works it's a beautiful experience it's a personal experience that i will testify to now there is a horizontal component to uh, thanksgiving which is uh, for our neighbor so when anybody does something good for you whether they give you something or uh, you know offer you a service or in whichever way they reach out they share their talents they help you remember to say thank you i think we all know that but sometimes people do forget right or we get so mad or we think it's our right and you you owed me this i don't have to say thank you well yes you do we do have to say thank you we must have that humble attitude it comes from humility that you know you're grateful that someone has reached out in this way so when we thank them we are again the thanks goes back to god because he is providing for us the service or the uh, our necessities through another person so again it goes back to him but that is the horizontal component we say thank you to our neighbor and my mother taught me this since i was little she always taught me to be grateful to always say thank you and that's something i grew up with i'm very sensitive to and aware of and that's the way we have raised joanna and julia to always say thank you always be aware of it never take anything in life for granted everything is a gift from a, a divine heart of god so s is for supplication and this is when we take our needs and petitions to god and ask him to intervene in our lives and assist us or the people we are praying for in some way and this is the one that i think most people spend more time on than in the first 3 um a c t yeah then on the first three and, and you know we always asking but i guess it's okay he's our loving father and uh, what did you have to say about that jo well um uh, having uh, if you take what you what you've said you must remember though that uh, god's not a vending machine he will you ask you request him uh, whatever you have to request him uh you do so humbly and uh, he will answer your prayers but he will answer it in his time and when it is needed for you so you cannot just demand things he will give it to you in fact the our father is a prayer of supplication when you think about it and at no point um actually it, it has all in it yes the our father has acts in it all of it yeah. all of it and uh, at no point in the prayer will you find any tone of uh, demand any tone of expectation here and now okay it is always die will be done i think that's the best way to end every prayer of supplication 
thy will be done. Yeah, and like when you said vending machine, it's not like we put in our prayers and press a button and out pops the answer. Like, oh, here we go. This is what I asked. God is not going to do that. No. He's a very strict disciplinarian, a loving father. Well, and he, he'll give us if it's good. But if it's not, he's going to not give it to us. No. Uh, or he'll wait and give it to us in the way he thinks best. He's, he's, the, he's the perfect parent. And That's just, right. just as us, uh, as parents, we don't give our children... Um, let's say if you have a little baby in your family, you don't feed a baby food uh, as an adult food just because the baby is hungry. Yeah. The, so adult food is not the right time for the baby to receive it. So the baby has to grow up till he or she can uh, get the adult yeah. food. So, so the baby gets food, yes, but not the food that we think. It's, it's uh, baby food at yeah. the time. So and I think what you mentioned is very good to help us understand this. It's uh, how parents, how we as parents relate with our children. Look at that same thing in your relationship with God. And then it makes it so much easier and understandable. You know, if something you know is bad for your kid, you, you will not give it to them. If a kid says, I want a, a, to, a, a box of matches, you know, and wants to go play with matches, would you give it to them? No. So sometimes we ask God for things that are not good for us that we may think are okay, but yeah. he knows and he won't give it. So we have to understand and accept that. But he'll always find something better to give. Because he loves to but give. Then, He's generous. So then you've got to have the humility to know that he knows what's best for you. Yes. Um, so as part of uh, supplication, we got to pray for so many things to uh, ask God for. It's not funny. But I'd say uh, we need to start someplace. One good place to start is... Uh, praying for our family and friends, praying for conversion of our country, praying for the conversion of this world, praying for the souls and of the faithful the tree, departed, the you know, sick, uh, the praying suffering. for the sick. There's so many things to pray persecuted. for. Persecuted. Okay, yeah. the, 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 the Christians around the world being persecuted for their faith, you know. Um, As it says, right, take all your needs to God, you yeah. know, take everything to Him and trust in Him when you approach Him. And it, it also says in Scripture, right, that. You don't receive because you don't ask. Go and ask, 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 ask. There's nothing wrong. No harm in asking. Uh, yeah. Right? So but if you don't receive, that's okay. It's no harm in asking. So um, you can also think when you go to God and you're asking him for healing. All right. Um, sometimes he'll give you the healing right away. Sometimes he will let you suffer, endure it. You know, for for the souls in purgatory. And uh, you will find that that is also part of uh, our, our, an offering uh, of your prayers. Um, so we do the best we can to, uh, to please the God and glorify Him in, uh, in every aspect of our life. All right. Um, we pray for our family. Uh, so these are the so, very supplications. Yeah. And so the horizontal component to this would be going to people. Now, God, you go to Him directly in prayer and ask Him for your needs. And then the horizontal component is you reach out to people. Yeah. Around you, your neighbor, your friends, your employers, family members, children, anybody, your parents, for help. If you need help with something, you need assistance, you go to other people to help you, right? So that is the horizontal component of supplication. You go to others, and always recognizing that even when they help you, right, it is God helping you through them. Yes, right? because all when, glory goes back when, to when you ask God for help, uh, I mean, you, you can only receive His help through other people. That's how. Uh, God gives us help. And you know, that's why our so, you know, Jesus has said, ask and you shall receive. How can we receive if you don't ask? So when we ask, we receive it because we must be prepared to give it as well. Yeah. Okay. And that's a two way. Uh, so as you said, the horizontal, yeah. it works both ways. Yeah. So the vertical becomes manifest in the horizontal. That's right. That's right. So we will conclude this part again, encouraging you to begin your life of prayer if you haven't already. Uh, or if you have lapsed, you know, sometimes you pray and you get discouraged, you get angry. And we all have different situations in life that make us respond the way we do. You know, either in our relationship with God in a positive way or we turn away from him. You know, and that's okay up to now. So, you know, look at things differently. We pray for you, uh, you know, that God will enlighten you, give you the grace you need to come back to a life of prayer. And like I said... Begin small. Don't have big expectations of yourself because then if you, you know, can't keep it, you get discouraged and then you don't go back to it, right? So begin small, be consistent, be faithful in that prayer. You will see a change. I will guarantee you, we will guarantee you 
that you will see a change if you're faithful and you do a follow through. Okay. Yeah, God, God rewards faithfulness. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't feel anything in your heart and you just keep going, don't stop. Don't, it's, it's not emotions. This is not about emotions. This is about a deep rooted connection and communication with God. You have to keep yourself open. If you shut yourself up, he can, he's not going to force himself in, right? He's a right. gentleman. He's not going to force himself gentleman. in. So <clears throat> call upon the assistance of holy men and women in heaven. Okay. The saints, the angels, most of all our blessed mother. Now, many non-Catholics don't like this aspect of it. But hey, if you can ask your grandmother and friends and parents to pray for you, why wouldn't you ask the mother of God to pray for you? She has clout in heaven. Her son is God. He can't refuse her anything. He's obedient to her and well, will be for all eternity because that's a mom-son relationship. Well, Go to her. Look, Go look, to look, her. Look Go at, to St. Joseph. Look at the story of the wedding feast at Cana. Um, she, she requested her son to uh, step in and do what he uh, what she wanted him to do, and he obeyed her. Yep, and he yeah. began his ministry by obeying his mother at a wedding feast, changing water into wine. So God bless you. God love you. We pray for you. We love you. And share this video with, with friends and family and people, you know, who might uh, get something out of it and f be encouraged to begin praying. So all of you who are there with the strong stalwarts in faith, Thank you for your love and support. This is not meant for you. You guys are already doing it great. This is for people who you know might need some kind of uh, encouragement or witness. And we are so happy to do that. So take care and God bless you. Bye-bye.